What is up, everyone? Welcome into another edition of our NBA DFS DraftKings Picks videos. I am your host, Justin Bales, joined by Spike. How are you doing? Not too bad, man. Not, not too bad. How about yourself? Not bad either. I guess I forgot to mention this is for Tuesday, February 8th. Um, weird five-game slate on a Monday. Usually that doesn't happen, but that has bumped the Tuesday slate to 10 games, which fantastic gives us a nice slate to work with uh, before we dive into everything if you enjoy this video go ahead give us a thumbs up subscribe to the channel drop any comments you have below as always all of our content can be found at dfscarmit.com we do have um, our core plays package which gets you our premium projections i will pull those up in a second for anyone watching on youtube along with our actual core plays uh, our premium content and then into our premium discord if you just want a regular discord chat dfs.com that is completely free you just don't get access to all of the premium channels but still a very useful tool now here if you're on youtube uh, you can see pulling up the uh, premium projections that we have, which obviously start with the usual stuff, player team, position, etc. cetera. Uh, we have salary, projected minutes, uh, fantasy points per minute. We have the ownership, ceiling floor projections, along with just overall. Uh, the karma value is basically points per dollar. And then obviously the advanced stats, uh, stuff as such as the assist rate, uh, rebound rates. We even have usage, um, pace boost, that kind of thing. As you can see on this last night, um, no one really stood out all that much, which usually doesn't happen all that much, but only a five-game slate. I believe our top play in terms of a per-dollar basis was Fred Van Vliet, who um, I don't think he destroyed, but I think he was a, a very solid play after that. You know, a few options there. He's Baisley, Kelly Oubre, uh, Devin Booker. But that is essentially what you're getting with our projections. You can sort it by position. Um, again, dfskarma.com. You can go to dfskarma.com slash pricing to get to our core plays package. Uh, you can also just drop into the description below every link that you need. Click the little show more. Uh, you'll find all the links that you could possibly need for whatever um, it is we're talking about here. But we can shift into the injury news for tonight. I think it's important for the first thing to note, Devin Booker uh, got hurt last night. He went to the bench, then he returned to the game. I'm assuming he's going to be completely fine for tonight, but definitely something that you at least can take a look at. Landry Shamet and Cameron Payne both ruled out on the other side. Shake Milton is out for Philadelphia. Matisse Thibel, questionable. Kyrie Irving, um, LaMarcus Aldridge, and Paul Millsap all out for the Brooklyn Nets. James Harden and Nick Claxton, both questionable. Isaiah Jackson, Malcolm Brogdon, and Terry Taylor, all questionable for the Indiana Pacers. On the opposite side, Lou Williams is doubtful, and Danilo Gallinari is questionable. For the Los Angeles uh, Clippers, nothing too serious, just Jay Scrub uh, has already been ruled out. He wasn't going to get any minutes anyway. For Memphis, you have Dylan Brooks, who will continue to miss time, and then Killian Tilly and Santi Aldama are both uh, out for this game as well. Mm -hmm. Eric Gordon is doubtful. For New Orleans, Garrett Temple's questionable. Willie Hernan Gomez has been ruled out. Kate Cunningham, which is a pretty big one, questionable for Detroit. Uh, Josh Jackson ruled out. Chris Tapps Porzingis already ruled out for Dallas, along with Maxi Kleber. And then Sterling Brown is questionable. Quentin Grimes was ruled out uh, last night. He is questionable. And Kemba Walker also was out last night, but I'm assuming that was rest for the first half of a back-to-back. My best guess is that Kemba Walker plays. He's not currently listed as anything at the moment, but I would assume that he does play in this game. And then Austin Rivers for Denver is questionable. George Hill out for Milwaukee. Uh, you have Carmelo Anthony out for the Lakers. Dwight Howard is questionable. And then a ton of news in the Minnesota Sacramento. Um, Tareen Prince, you know, our guy that just keeps going off. Uh, Tareen Prince, Naz Reed, D'Angelo Russell, Josh Okoge, and Pat Beverly, all questionable for Minnesota. De'Aaron Fox and Marvin Bagley, both questionable for Sacramento. RJ Hampton, Etwan Moore, Michael Carter-Williams, and Markel Fultz all continue to miss time for the Orlando Magic. Larry Nance Jr. suffered somewhat of a uh, setback in his injury. He has been ruled out along with Eric Bledsoe, who's already been ruled out for Portland. 
that's it for the injury news. One thing that I do think that we should at least mention at this point is that uh, I believe Thursday is the trade deadline. And we already saw, you know, Norman Powell, Robert Covington got traded um, for what essentially Eric Bledsoe, Keon Johnson, Justice Winslow in two seconds, was it? One second? Uh, yeah, I, th- I think it was one. Um, absolutely. You know, Portland got absolutely fleeced in that trade. I, I don't think anyone's thinking otherwise. I like Justice Winslow significantly better than most people. And I think Keon Johnson is the perfect player to go to Portland. Still think they got absolutely destroyed in that trade. Um, but, you know, that's kind of where we're at in the NBA. I know guys like De'Aaron Fox, um, he's the one that kind of reminded me to at least bring up the uh, trade deadline because Fox is almost guaranteed to be on the move. Um, so just keep that in mind. Stuff's going to change throughout the day with guys getting traded. Uh, maybe not necessarily today. It's still only Tuesday, but uh, come Wednesday and Thursday should be uh, just a hell of a time. Um, NBA trade deadline always is like that. We have rumors of James Harden getting traded to Philly. I don't know how true you think that those are, but you know, pretty deep into the intro here. Let's get into position by position. Spike, start us off at point guard. Who are you looking at? Uh, you know, I, I got no issues. Ish, I have no issues with Luca at the top uh, at 12-2. Um, he's going to be sh- shouldering that offense again. It's all going to go through him. As long as he uh, doesn't, you know, pick up four four fouls in the first half like he did the other game, uh, he should be fine. Um Right underneath him. This is just huge news. Uh, if Harden plays, uh, I, I I want I want a lot of Harden. Um, it's he, there's no Ky, Ky, Kyrie. It's in Brooklyn. There's still no Durant. So you know Harden's just going to take a bunch of shots. He's going to be passing the ball left and right. He gets re- rebounds too. He can contri- contribute with steals. Uh, if he's out, I guess I'll just j- jump down quick. If he's out, I really like uh, Cam Th- Cam Th- Thomas at forty eight hundred. Uh, I actually played him on the early slate a couple of days ago, and he kind of he kind of did his thing, and that was with Harden and Kyrie in. So uh, if you take Harden Harden off, uh, he should have a real a really nice game. Uh, going going back to the top, uh, John Morant uh, set. A little over 10, 10K, I think. It's a really good matchup against the Clippers. Uh, the offense just completely runs through him. He's a high usage guy. Uh, there's really not much more I could say about him. He, he's, he's, he, 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 he looks really good up there. Uh, if you go down, uh, at 8,400, CJ McCollum gets a matchup against the Ma- Magic. I personally think this is someone who's probably going to be on the chopping block as well, and gonna probably be shipped out some some somewhere so i feel like he kind of he's kind of aware of that too so he's probably going to be playing even harder to kind of show teams what he's about and he's got to play hard any, anyway because a lot of that offense run runs through him with no no lillard little out powell and covington are gone so i mean he's one of the last few left that's actually still still playing right now uh so i really i really like him here uh, you go down, and just like I said, Cam T- T- Thomas, uh, Patty Mills at fifty eight hundred. He's he's getting a little up there in price, but I still think he has a ceiling that can top that price. Um, you, even if Harden's in, I still l- l- like him because there's no Kyrie, uh, and, and they're and they're just really depleted with injuries right now. Uh, right underneath him at fifty six hundred is Kevin Porter Jr. It's a matchup against the Pe- the Pelicans again. These guys just played each other, I think, two nights ago. Uh, and he really didn't have a good showing, kind of coming off of a, a non-COVID-related illness. I think he's still semi-dealing with it. But, I mean, 5600 is really cheap for a guy that we know um, has d- double double upside. And, you know, I mean, if his shot's falling and he's he's hot, he can uh, really do some da- da- damage. Uh, gets a lot of assists, too. Uh, but that's probably about it for me. There's some guys I'm sure you're going to mention that I was saving for shoot, it, shoot, shoot shooting guard, but have at them. Yeah, I mean, up at the top, Luca, or I was going to say Luca. Um, James Harden is the obvious guy. If James Harden is out, you can go to Luca. You can go down to John Morant. Completely agree there. Um, I, I feel like those three are pretty much really the top options. Uh, 
I have no problems with Trey uh, Young either. Uh, specifically if Malcolm Brogdon's out. If Brogdon's back in, I bump him down a little bit. I think, well, one, I guess we'll say Drew Holiday uh, against the Lakers. The Lakers are just god-awful against versatile point guards. Obviously, that's Holiday. He's coming off of a massive game. Um, just comes with a ton of upside. One other thing just to look at, I'll keep it here because we're at guard. Um, and more or less, they are... Uh, point guards at this point but if d'angelo russell and patrick beverly this whole slate kind of is going to depend on them if they're both in either one can be used but they're better suited for tournaments if one is out the other one makes a really good option if both are out you can use someone like Jalen noel who we've kind of been attacking but they get a matchup against sacramento so like even if they're both playing it's just still a really good spot for both of them so i have no problems whatsoever if you want to take a shot on one of those guys or something I th this is really weird um, because we don't necessarily know his role at the moment, but Norman Powell is now point guard eligible. Yep. 24 minutes in his debut, 28 real life points, massive debut. He had uh, six potential assists in that game. I mean, if they, if they're just going to hand him the keys to the offense and say, go do your thing. I'm cool taking Norman Powell because at some point in time, he's going to play 30 plus minutes. It's just, is that tonight? I don't necessarily know. Probably not. Uh, and that's the big issue, especially with him being 7,000. I did want to point out that he's now point guard eligible, though, and you can use him um, at that position and in GPPs tonight if you want. Reggie Jackson gets a good matchup against Memphis. Obviously, Powell came in last game. Reggie Jackson played 25 minutes. He got benched at the end of the game. It wasn't a good game for him. But a lot more was there than kind of what meets the eye. He only played 25 minutes, and he had 14 potential assists in that game. Uh, it could have been a really big game. He shot 3 of 12 from the field. I would assume that he gets back to bigger minutes tonight. And if that's the case, you know, he dropped 49 fantasy points in the game before that. Uh, strictly GPP option. Wouldn't go there in cash games, but I do think that he's GPP viable. Obviously, you have the Brooklyn guys uh, specifically, you know, in terms of whether James Harden plays or not. They're going to be very good options. Uh, Devontae Graham at 5,200 point guard only um, on DraftKings gets the plus matchup against Houston, who's just an atrocious defense. And literally, basically anyone for New Orleans can be considered. Uh, Graham didn't really perform well in their last game, but no major issues if you want to go back to him. I guess the only final spot uh that i would be looking at and this is for the cheaper guys is if malcolm brogdon is out dwayne washington jr makes a really good option he's point guard shooting guard eligible and uh, if he's starting Kiefer sykes can be used as well he's only 3900 and point guard eligible but i feel like we just absolutely overloaded this podcast with point guards that was so many options um i mean it's a big slate there's a lot of really good spots to attack so uh, we can shift over to shooting guard here. Who are you looking at? Uh, yeah, I mean, we'll start off at the top. Uh, Brandon Ingram is coming off of a massive game against uh, the Houston Rockets, and lo and behold, he gets another whack at him here. Um, I don't think you should expect another 64 fantasy points from him, but I think even at 9,200, um, he could still um, – pay off that tag pretty nicely. Uh, I, I don't see much ch changing in this mat in this matchup. Uh, Houston's just not good defensively at all, just anywhere. Um, and if Brandon Ingram's going to sh shoulder the load again, then, you know, count me in. Uh, I'm, I, I, I don't think this is someone I'd, I, I'd, I'd use. I'd keep your eye on him to see if Chris Lovert is available to play. I'm kind of curious to see what Cleveland's actually going to do with him. Um, but I guess in like larger field tournaments, if he's playing, he's definitely worth a shot. No one really knows kind of what his role is going to be in that offense. Uh, so I guarantee you no one will have him whatsoever. Um, underneath him is Tyrese Halliburton at 8,600. Um, you know, he's get he's getting up there in price, but I mean, this is someone who's, if De'Aaron Fox is out, you know, he, he pretty much on the regular drops 45 to 50 fantasy points. 
uh, has a has a really nice assist rate. Uh, you know, if his shots falling, he can add to that too. Uh, can can also put up some steals for you as well. And then, yeah, my next guy was going to be Norman Powell. I cannot believe he's just point guard sh- shooting guard eligible, <laughs> going from small forward. And I think sometimes power forward eligible to point guard shoot guard. Wild. Uh, but un- underneath him, uh, Seth Curry at fifty four hundred still seems a little too cheap. Uh, gets a matchup against the Suns. It's not ideal. Uh, they aren't really that great at guarding the th- the three ball, which is kind of what Curry it, it excels at. And he's really scoring dependent. But if his shots falling and, and they're going to have him put up a ton, a ton of shots, fifty four hundred is just too cheap for him. Uh, right underneath him, Jalen Green is still is still too cheap at five k. Gets a matchup against the the Pelicans again. Uh, another another one who's just scoring de- dependent, but if if his shots falling, I, I I'm willing to take that chance again. I, I don't think he did terrible the other other day, but I I, I don't think he did you know like light, 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 lights out. Uh, underneath him is DeAnthony Mellon at 4700. Uh, he's just, his his minutes aren't secure whatsoever, but like he's been seeing more playing time recently. Uh and he can he's a really good uh fantasy point per minute guy so he even if he gets only 20 minutes he could still get you 30 fantasy points which is easy, easily beating off that tag uh, and i guess the other one i'll mention i mean we're still waiting we're going to be waiting on that news for a while and it's a t- it's a 10 o'clock game but if either one beverly or uh Ru- russell are out uh, Sacramento gives up the most fantasy points to shooting guards. So Anthony Edwards, for me, is kind of in play either way. But if if one one of them is out, I I, I like him a lot more. Uh, but that's probably about it for me there at shooting guard. Yeah, shooting guard. Again, a ton of options here. Where one Brandon Ingram is my top play, most likely, like top overall play uh, at the position, regardless of price. I absolutely love him. Um, Houston has no one that's going to slow him down. He kind of proved that in both games at this point. He even started the last game off pretty slow. I think he had like twelve points at half or something. Just absolutely dominated them in the third quarter and continued it on. Anthony Edwards is in a really interesting spot because the weird thing about Anthony Edwards. And it's kind of, I think it's the same for Colonel Anthony Towns. I'd have to double check, but his scoring isn't dependent on D'Angelo Russell. Uh, He scores about the exact same overall uh, with Russell on the court versus with Russell off. So it doesn't matter. And the only reason I say that it doesn't matter is because if you look at the Kings recently, they've been absolutely atrocious against small forwards. So I think that Pat Bev and Russell on the floor might actually help him. With that being said, If one of the two are out, he's going to shift over to shooting guard. And we know that the Kings are literally probably the worst team in the NBA against guards. So um, fine either way there. I think that Edwards is just one of the better plays on the entire slate. Uh, That's a guy that I would definitely be willing to attack. As you move down, I need to see the starting lineup for the Indiana Pacers. If Chris Durte is starting at shooting guard. Absolutely love him. If he's starting at small forward, don't like it nearly as much. Uh, the Atlanta Hawks are one of the worst teams in the NBA against shooting guards. Durte, obviously, you know, in his last game just flashed. Someone has to take over for Karis LeVert. And granted, it'll be Malcolm Brogdon if he returns. And we know that Doman Sabonis is going to get his. But um, if Brogdon's not back, you know, Durte could be the number two option. It's not completely out of the question or anything. He's only 5,500. Then obviously the really good matchup against um, Atlanta. Moving down, I think Davion Mitchell will be fine. If De'Aaron Fox is out, his price tag is getting up there a little bit. Um, I do think that there are some really solid cheap options on this slate. Uh, If you look, one that I don't necessarily love that much, but I guess it's important to at least acknowledge if his shot's falling, he does come with some upside, and he's actually playing a relatively solid role for the Denver Nuggets is Bryn Forbes. Only 3,500. Don't love the matchup against the Knicks, but at the same time, uh, 25 and 30 minutes in two of his last three. 21 and 32 fantasy points in those games. I actually made a joke the other night. Um 
because Brent Forbes was shooting more than Nikola Jokic. That actually uh, ended the game like that as well. <laughs> Jokic, for whatever reason, has decided he doesn't want to shoot the ball anymore. Um, I know that the coach actually got mad at him because they were on a small losing streak and they told him to go out there and shoot. And I believe he started to again in his last game, but Bryn Forbes was shooting more than Nikola Jokic at one point. So um, there's that. I, I guess that's you know something that happened and and. I don't know if you necessarily would make you feel good about Forbes or if you just feel really bad about Joker right now. I, truthfully, I don't know how to take it. I think that there are better salary relief options. Obviously, with um, Robert Covington gone, Norman Powell gone, someone had to take up minutes. Uh, ben McLemore and CJ Ellaby both finding more minutes. I think McLemore had like 12 uh, three-point attempts in his last game or something. At 3,500, I don't honestly care who the player is. If they're taking 12 threes in a game and they're playing almost 30 minutes, I will at least give them a chance, let alone if they're a guy that shoots almost 40% from deep. So um, to me, Macklemore makes a lot of sense tonight. And then LB is a guy that we know can score fantasy points in a hurry. So I don't have any issues if you want to go with someone like uh, LB either here. But Macklemore is really just the top option. I think we can shift to uh, small forward. I know we mentioned a lot of small forwards at shooting guard as the positions kind of you know melt together, but uh, who do you got at this position? Yeah, I'll just throw a couple out here just so we're not naming off the entire slate. Um, <laughs> it is getting pretty ridiculous. It is, but it is to be fair, it is a, it is a ten game slate, so uh, there, there's just a lot of options and a lot of different ways to go. I guess at the top, I, I can't believe I'm going to say this, even with them all healthy and pro- probably playing, LeBron James at 10.5K isn't terrible to me. The only reason I say that is because he's going up against Giannis. So you know how LeBron likes to be in the spotlight, and this is like one of those games where it's just like he wants to prove that he's the best. So It's on I mean, TNT too, I think. Exactly. So, I mean – it's a late game too. So, you know, all, I mean, all eyes are going to be on it. Um, so I wouldn't surprise me in the least bit for him to kind of take over the game at any point in time and all points of time, uh, just to see him kind of go try to stay toe to toe with Giannis. Uh, I mean, there, there, there's just so many good op- options really up high and you can probably only pick t- two of them if you're lucky. So, uh, I don't know if I get to him, but I, I do think it's a really good option there. As as long as as long as he plays, uh, questionable. Pro- he's probably probable. He is probable. Uh, other than that, uh, just to keep keep it shorter, uh, Dorian Finney Smith at five K I think is still too cheap. Uh, the Mavericks are just missing a lot of pieces right now. Uh, gonna have to wait for a little bit of news there, but this guy's seeing over 30 minutes a game right now, and he still really hasn't had any kind of a ceiling game whatsoever. Um, I, I don't know if it's coming. I know he can do better than he has the last couple couple of games. So at 5K, he can easily beat that tag if his shots falling and some re- some re- re- rebounds fall his way. <clears throat> uh, and then one one more, I guess I'll mention is. Uh, Garrison Matthews at 4,300 is a pretty good value play for Houston. Uh, uh, he just – the other day playing the Pels, I think he dropped like tw- like 25 fantasy points, and I'll take that from someone under 4,500 any day of the week. Uh, but more or less, that's about it. If if if, if, if you really want to take like a like a like a punt, you could you could it, it's gross, but like someone like Josh Richard <laughs> Richardson. Um, just, I mean, if if Harden's out, I, I don't see that game staying close for long. Um, so it's just a punt play, but that's about it for me, a small forward. Yeah, it's, it's kind of funny because you said you're going to keep your pool at small forward um, shorter because we've been naming off so many guys. I don't think that's true. I think you kept your pool of small forward shorter because small forward is an atrocious position once again. It is. It is. It's ugly. Um, I don't know. There's, there's not that many guys that I would add to kind of what there's a bunch of guys that are shooting guard eligible that also you can use a small forward. 
So go back and re-listen to shooting guard. Those are really the best guys here. But um, I agree with what you said about LeBron. I actually was thinking LeBron myself because obviously you have a nationally televised game. He gets against one of the best players in the league. These are the type of times that LeBron likes to show out. Uh, and 10-5 isn't that pricey, really. Outside of that, I think you can move down. You can use someone like Marcus Morris. If his shot's falling, he has tons of upside. Um, Franz Wagner at 5,500 against Portland. They're really bad against small forwards, but obviously the team dynamic has changed a little bit. I don't anticipate with, you know, Ben McElmore getting more minutes that their defense is going to get all that much better. Um, so I do think that he's fine. Another guy, I mean, I feel like every time I even look at him where I'm like, oh, I want to use him or I would consider using him. I just feel like I've already missed the boat. But Reggie Bullock is 5,600. He scored 40 plus in two of his last three. He scored 25 plus in five consecutive over those five. He's shooting almost 50% from deep. It's so, I don't, I don't even know how to categorize. This. It's wild. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I, I used to like Reggie Bullock, but it's not like he's this world beater. Now he gets a matchup against uh, Detroit. Who's obviously not a good team or defense. So, it's it feels like Reggie Bullock's one of the better plays at small forward, doesn't it? It does. I mean, I think oh, I think some people will probably get a little scared away by that fifty six hundred, but uh, they should. I, That's not it, a good price for for Reggie Bullock. It's, it's not, not. It's going to keep him low owned. But I mean, if 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 he's going to keep playing the way he's playing, you know, he can beat that tag. But I mean, he's definitely not high on my list but i mean he's definitely worth me mentioning it's it's crazy i think we can shift over to power forward where you know i'm sure there's a few more plays but um a few more plays at power forward than small forward i don't mean that there's more small forward plays um moving to power forward who are you looking at here uh i got no problems with giannis up top personally not gonna gonna get to him um there's just, there's, there's just uh, between him, Middleton, Holiday. I mean, I know Giannis is going to get his, but I just feel like there's be there's better sp spend ups. You know, call me cra mm -hmm. cra crazy. Uh, underneath him, uh, Demontis Sab Sabonis at 9400 is looking pretty nice. I mean, it'll be a little more dependent on Brogdon, but. Uh, he's he's coming back into his own. It's, it's it's too cheap. He really hasn't had a good season at all. But uh, I think with Levert gone, he's going to have to step up a little more. And this is a decent spot ag against the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, yeah. You go down some more. Uh, Wendell Carter at 6,800 is a pretty good play against a decimated Trail Bla Blazers team. I mean, besides Nurkic, they really don't have a lot of a lot of big men there. Uh, and Wendell Carter is someone that can, you know, he can go and dunk on you or he can go out and shoot the three. Uh, comes comes with, with, with plenty of opportunities to rebound, steals, blocks. Just overall, he's a really, a really great player. Uh, other than that, you want to go down. Jared Vanderbilt at 5,300 against the Kings. I got no issues with that whatsoever. Uh, right and underneath him. It's ugly. I can't believe I'm saying it in in 2022, but Blake Griffin at 4600 is looking like a solid play. Uh, they're just they're just they're they're just out of a bunch of big men, and if Claxton is eventually ruled out, I mean that doesn't leave many many big guys to be there. There's like Blake Griffin, James Johnson, who I wouldn't even really consider big. And then like Dayron Sharp, and that's it. So Griffin's going to be forced to play a little bit with Robert Williams uh, on the other side. They're going to need some kind of size to kind of somewhat stymie him. Uh, but that's probably about it for me at power forward. Yeah, so this is an interesting position. One, I completely agree that you can use Giannis if you want Two, uh, Domitas Sabonis is one of my favorite plays on the entire slate. He didn't get the minutes uh, last time, but Miles Turner is um, 
going to continue to miss time. And when you look at what Sabonis does without Miles Turner out there, it's crazy. He, he's so good at rebounding. And then he comes with, you know, realistically triple double potential with 2020 potential on top of it. It's nuts how uh, high his ceiling gets. And he, he wants out um, of Indiana. He made it very clear. Uh, they haven't traded him yet, but realistically the, the best way to get out at this point is really showcase yourself, make, a team offer something that, that Indiana can't refuse and get out. And uh, I, I think he kind of knows that he's been going off in recent games. Obviously he missed a bit of time, but you know, uh, I do really like him in that situation. Moving down. I feel like it. So this truly warms my heart and it might just be me kind of looking at it in a way that there's a really certain spot that I like. And uh, Jackson Hayes looks really good. The dude is legitimately good. <laughs> The thing is, if you don't follow college basketball, it was just big man after big man after big man after big man after big man out of Texas. Started with Miles Turner. Um, Miles Turner, uh, obviously very good player. Mo Bamba was in the group. Uh, Jackson Hayes, Jared Allen, all of them came from Texas. Jackson Hayes legitimately looks like all of the other ones are looking at this point, right? They're yeah. just really good players. They've developed extremely well. He's finally getting minutes. Now, I don't think they're safe. We talked about him before we came on the pod, and he played because Herbert Jones immediately got into foul trouble, which gave him first half minutes, and then Jonas Valanciunas got into foul trouble in the second half, which then gave him second half minutes, and all of it kind of you know played out perfectly for Jackson Hayes to get almost 30 minutes. The big thing is he doesn't need 30 minutes to hit value at his current price tag. He comes with the upside to do it much uh, shorter amount of time, especially against a team like Houston. I don't think he's safe. I do think he's at least reasonable for 5,500. Outside of that, um, I think you made some good points. I think you can consider uh, Alperin Sengun, who uh, I think is going to be a very good player. He's finally getting more minutes, 25 plus in each of his last uh, three. They're playing him next to Christian Wood at times now. So 4,500 isn't a price tag that I'm not willing to. Uh, to at least take the shot on him. I actually played him the last time that he played. And then it's pretty gross. Um, but, and, and actually it probably goes along with my weird love for Texas bigs, but Greg Brown, he's now seen 16 and 17 minutes in his last two games. In the 17 minutes, he posted 19 fantasy points. Obviously Larry Nance jr. Out um, Robert Covington gone. And I mean, Norman Powell gone too, which opens up more minutes. Nasir Little lost for the season. And he is a big from Texas. Now, he doesn't fit the mold of the shot blocking center. He was a stretch for Texas. Uh, they're, they're still very good at developing any type of big, really, in my opinion. And Greg Brown was prior to last season, you know, sp spoken of as a top five pick. He didn't really look that good at Texas. Instead of going back, improving his stock, he decided he wanted to leave. Uh, got drafted by Portland. He's 3,000. So I think it's super risky. I think on a 10-game slate, you probably don't want to go that deep, and I may have just wanted to uh, continue spouting this love for Texas bigs rather than actually giving an elite play. But uh, he does come with some upside, and at some point in time, if Portland is actually serious about, which they are, they traded Norman Powell, they traded Robert Covington, they got virtually nothing back compared to what they gave up. Um, but when they're serious about this rebuild, it, it doesn't make any sense not to give Greg Brown G, uh, the minutes. You're going to give minutes to the young players. He's the rookie. He has a ton of upside. You know what I mean? So if they give him, if he plays, you know, 25 minutes tonight, he's going to destroy the $3,000 price tag. It's just unlikely at this point that he gets it, but he did get close to 20 in his last game. Um, at some point in time, they probably go up. So sometimes it's better to, you know, shoot for it before it happens versus after the fact when everyone else knows that. Uh, and that's kind of where you make a lot of money in fantasy. But, you know, that's all, also where you play Greg Brown. He scores five fantasy points and you lose your tournaments, right? Yeah. So um, I don't know. I, I think that he at least comes with upside. You're probably thinking that's an atrocious play. Don't do that. Uh, the listeners are probably thinking under no circumstances is Greg Brown going in my lineups. I understand where you guys are coming from too, but we can shift to center. 
a lot of good options. We have another slate where it's Joker and Embiid, both vying for MVP. So what are you doing at center tonight? Uh, you know, I prefer Joker out of the two. I really don't like playing anyone against the Knicks, but if it's going to be someone, it's going to be Joker. Uh, I think it's a little bit better of a matchup than Embiid against the Suns. Um, definitely a pace down spot, but uh, yeah, you you know me, I'm 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 a Joker guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, right underneath him uh, is Carl Anthony Towns, at ten point two k. Um, I got no issues with him going against the Kings, who just can't guard anyone whatsoever. Um, it's a little up there in price, and when you're up there, I mean, you, you probably just look at Joker or, or, or Embiid, but I have no issues with it. Then other than that, I got a couple cheaper plays. I'm really liking Bobby, Bobby Portis at 6,600 against uh, the Lakers. Uh it's just a Lakers team that kind of struggles against centers. They don't have a true center whatsoever. And I think Portis can easily get a double double here and pay off that tag. Um, and then if you want to go even a little cheaper, uh, Rashawn Holmes is 5,100 going against the Timberwolves. Um, Carl Anthony Towns is, isn't someone you're really scared of, uh, like defensively. Uh, and I think Holmes can can rack up a lot of rebounds against him. And at 5,100, I just think he's a little too cheap. Uh, other than that, I mean, uh, you could talk me into playing some Steven Adams at 5,500 against the Cl- Clippers. They're going to need his size with Zubak and Hartenstein and even Ibaka to some ex- extent. Uh, but that's probably about it for me at center. Yeah, I think uh, I agree with Joker. Um I prefer him to Embiid. It's getting the, the gaps widening. It's 600 now. I think they were like 100 the last time they played together or something, but um, prefer Joker. I think Towns is completely fine because of the matchup against Sacramento, but personally, I pre- uh, prefer Sabonis, who you can also use here. So unless using them together, uh, Sabonis is probably the guy. I think Yusuf Nurchik is completely fine for the pure upside that he brings at 8,500. I just also think that he's relatively risky. Um, Robert Woods and Al Horford don't play them together, obviously, but I do think that either one of them is fine. I probably prefer Horford uh, for the price tag because he's so much cheaper, which really sucks to say, because when do you ever want to play Al Horford over Robert Williams? But, um, just so much cheaper. Agree with Bobby Portis. I think that's a good call. Steven Adams as well. As you shift down, I mean, Rashawn Holmes, definitely too cheap, especially against Minnesota. I just wish we had more of a lock-in on his minutes. Like, it feels like he's kind of in the mid-20s, and then all of a sudden he'll play 30, then all of a sudden he'll play literally 20 and and kind of shift around. Um, Right below him, Mo Bamba is fine in tournaments. Dwight Powell is locked into big minutes. I think he's one of the better options for his price tag on this slate because they literally just don't have any bigs. <clears throat> so they're going to have to go with um, Dwight Powell probably for minutes in the mid thirties. Once again, that might be about it. Honestly, um, not really all that much. I'm looking down. If you want to get too cheap, I think like, I don't know if you want to gross play Zeke Nanji is seeing minutes in the twenties. So like, if you want to throw him in a large field GPP, okay. But uh, that's about it for what I'm looking at at center. That uh, was a lot a lot to digest. We gave out a ton of plays. It was a 10-game slate, a really good 10-game slate where a lot of great games that we can attack. But uh, that's what we got for you guys. Again, if you enjoy the video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. You can comment anything you want below. We'll try to be in throughout the day to answer them. Uh, check out the description for all the links you could possibly need for our core plays, Discord, etc. Thank you for watching. Good luck tonight. Hopefully everyone hits it big.